right, I'm trying to um, make this so you can see everything in focus here. This is a, a propane or a map gas torch, Surefire T655. That there's a bunch of burns o matic and um, some generic ones out now that are all seem to be the same type of device. It sparks. This one is an adjustable flame. Some of them are not. Um, so there's a, a spark generator in here, a high voltage generator in here. It's a piezoelectric device. And it sends the high voltage out through this insulator using that spring as a conductive, um, as a conductor to, to connect to the bottom of the spark plug wire. So basically it sends a high voltage out. You can actually feel it a little bit almost, you know, if you on a car, if you've ever held a spark plug wire and fired the car off, you can feel it. It'll give you a shock. This one is not that strong, but it's the same exact design <clears throat> and so the general working principle of the spark part which is all i'm talking about here is that this the high voltage has to be insulated from here all the way to the tip of the spark plug wire so if there's any kind of short circuit it's not going to spark um, so this insulator has to be intact this black piece here um there's so this is this so this is the spark plug wire itself. This is a conductor. This is a spark plug wire. And this is an insulator. And these are just press fit together. Um, so the spark plug wire is just... At the factory, what they did is they just trimmed it and folded it over. There's this insulator that fits inside that little fold there. And then it's just pressed together. So that press fit makes the the conductive core of the spark plug wire, the blue wire, conductive with this brass base. And then this brass base is going to touch this spring in here. So when you fire off the, the, the igniter, the little piezoelectric device is going to send a high voltage all the way up to the tip of the wire. So it's got to be... You can't have any breaks in this insulation. And up here there's a little um, catch uh, or a guide. You can see it here in the end of the, the torch tip. And the wire is just going to be held in... It's not, it's not really pinched, it's just held in place. Um, so there's just a space between the tip of the wire and the nozzle and that is where the high voltage is going to jump across and make a spark so the high voltage is coming up the wire it's insulated until it gets to this exposed tip and then it's going to jump across to this outer shell so this is the this is the base the brass base of this thing it's held on it's held in place by a uh, set screw there, a little allen head set screw. The torch tip, this stainless steel torch tip is threaded. And this is threaded. So, um, and they're, they're from the factory, they're bonded with Loctite. They're actually not easy to separate. So what I did is I clamped this in a soft jaw vise and I used, um, you know, I ended up using a soft jaw plier to turn this. It wasn't easy to separate. And then this is threaded, this little elbow is threaded into the base. And I have another one here that's, the base is broken um, because I dropped this thing, but I'll show you. So this little elbow is threaded in here. And again, it's, there's some Loctite on it, but um, this one came apart easier than the brass um, separated from the stainless. So it's all screwed together. It's, it's definitely something you can take apart and you just want to be careful. Um, of course, this is going to thread all the way down, but because it's not the threads aren't clean, it's not going to go too smoothly by hand here. Um, and then to get the wire, so to get the wire up to the torch tip, it goes up through this little elbow, and you can push it past the elbow there. 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in here, but it's it's protruding through into the centerpiece here. And what I use is this appropriately sized drill bit with the using the dull end to tr to give that wire a little push upwards. Um, so it's now the wire is kind of bent up here, and it's best to put this mount this in a soft jaw. So you can use two hands because you don't want to shred this um, insulator. It's it's relatively thick, but you don't want to shred it. Um, so if you're taking the wire out, you want to you know have it with a soft jaw and kind of feed the wire and pull it gently. And if you're putting the wire back in, you want to have this mounted in the soft jaw. Push this wire in and get it to where you've got at least some of the wire sticking out and then you can use your hands. Um, it's actually harder to put it back together by, harder to put it back together than it is to take it out. Um, anyway, um, in my case, I wanted to know how to take it out because I need to, I'm gonna reattach these. I soldered it together years ago, but it didn't, um, I just was being very gentle at the heat because I didn't want to melt that wire. I didn't realize at the time how I could take this apart. Um, so the wire is going to, you know, so when it's put together, your spark plug wire is going to extend up here and it's going to come out, depends, depends on how long your wire is. These two torches, the wires are somewhat different lengths. Um, let's see if I can get this together enough to at least show you so and then there's this this spacer or guide up here and it's supposed to just kind of grab the wire but you don't want to penetrate this blue insulation and in this case this wire is kind of messed up because the insulation stripped back it's not supposed to be like that it's supposed to look like like this one where it's just cut off because there's a high enough voltage that when it when the high voltage reaches here it's going to look for a new home and it's going to jump across to the edge of the torch and that gap is defined by this by this spacer so if your if your blue wire is conductive to this if you know if you put a multimeter on the blue wire and tip and on this shell and you're getting conductivity it's not going to work it's, it's got to be an air gap and then it'll jump across so i think i covered everything i wanted to cover there's this little spacer it's just a little spring-loaded guy that sits in the end of this um torch chip here there's of course the the brass tip that um, now these two torches, the wires were somewhat different lengths. One of them was sparking, was long enough to spark to the, basically at the end of the stainless piece. And on the other one, it was a little bit longer. It was protruding into the, um, about, I don't know, not a, not a quarter inch, but maybe a sixteenth of an inch past the end of the stainless tip. So it was probably sparking to the um, brass tip. But anyway... Um, so brass tip on threads, a little spring clip is just spring loaded in there. It's not attached. Um, it's just, um, just held in there by spring force. The wire is not supposed to be attached to the little spring. It's just supposed to be guided in there. Um, this stainless torch tip on threads from this brass base and this brass elbow unthreads from the brass base and the whole thing comes off just with one set screw right here so the um spark plug wire goes up it's, it's going to sit can't really put this together because the spark plug wire is not in there but you can see how this insulator here is recessed I can show you here. It's 
So this insulator is recessed, sits up on there, and then it sits in there. So the high voltage that's generated in the body is insulated from everything by this black insulator and this insulator on the tip of the elbow. And the insulation is maintained by this thick blue insulation all the way up to the tip. Um, so it's pretty simple to take apart once you can see how they put it together. Um, and that's really all I wanted to show you. In my case, I'm taking this apart because I have two that weren't working. One wasn't sparking because the tip of the wire is, um, is thrashed and was short-circuiting to the, the torch tip without making a spark. And on the other one, of course, this is broken. So um, while I had it apart, I thought I'd make a video. And again, this is this is a Surefire T655. This is probably from around the year, I don't know, year 2000 or something like that. Um, these are still made by all different kinds of companies. Um, and I'm sure that the, the sparking mechanism is essentially the same. So... Um, now, I don't know if they're all made like this one where you can unthread them or not, but um, at least that's what you should be looking at. If it's it's kind of hard to tell until you actually just like crank on it, but if you have, for sure, if you have the same model, obviously you can unthread them. Um, and I don't know, there are probably maybe a bunch of them coming out of the same factory with different brands. So. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, it took me a while to figure out how to get this thing apart, so I thought I'd preserve it for posterity and post it to YouTube.